All right. My name is Remy from Bahama Lama Coral, the YouTube channel. Uh, if you would like to go peruse over there at any given point, you can. Uh, we're going to talk about how to set up a tank. Just a simple saltwater tank. You want to get started in this. Uh, I would suggest, because I have a feeling that those who are watching live right now are not going to necessarily take this down with the pen and paper. Uh, but in the future, I would imagine this video will live on YouTube somewhere and someone who is curious about setting up a saltwater tank will be like, you know what, I'm gonna do this, take notes. Because we're gonna run through how to set up a very simple saltwater tank. Just a little bit, bit of background about me. I've been keeping aquariums my entire life. I can remember, you know, pulling that first goldfish from the fair. Don't do that. Don't let your kids do that. Just go buy some feeder fish at Petco or something at that point. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what piqued my interest and got me into it. I've been keeping freshwater aquariums ever since I got into college. Then I get into saltwater, really just fish only. And then as of the last seven years, I've really gotten into coral. And I think that that's kind of, that's taken a hold of uh, where I'm at right now. So if you venture on over to the Bahama Lama Coral YouTube channel, lots and lots of information there. But let's talk about tanks. So my first tank was a 13 and a half Fluval Evo. I would not suggest getting a nano tank for your first tank. All in ones are great. Uh, I would not suggest getting something that small though. I would say probably 25 to 60 is probably a good starter tank. When you're thinking about where you're gonna put up this tank, that's it, it, location is key. For me, everything's in the basement, so there's not a whole lot of natural sunlight that's getting in there, uh, and that's gonna be great for algae control later down the road. So you can control the lighting, you know what's going on there. So think about a good location in your home to put this tank. You can build the stand yourself, you can get a whole kit. Uh, a lot of these kits will come with everything that you need. That's a good option. Um, there's many different tanks out there, Planet Aquariums, Waterbox, Fluval, they all have their own. Innovative Marine has a great uh, setup that you can do with all-in-one tanks. Start with the tank, right? How big do you want to go? And then once you're ready to start that tank, there's a few things that you're going to need. You're obviously going to need a heater, depending on where you live in the United States. Uh, a lot of people in the South don't use heaters. They use chillers. Uh, that's a conversation for a different day. Uh, but I would say having a heater is first and foremost one of those essential items for the life support that you're going to need. Another one is a return pump. Even if you have an all-in-one tank, you're going to need to circulate that water through the back of the tank. And you're going to probably put some media back there, carbon, uh, GFO maybe if you've got some you know issues going on later down the road, uh, sponges, filter media, things like that. So you'll need a return pump. You'll also need an automatic top off. This is optional, but I will say it will save you so much headache down the road having an automatic top off. So what happens in salt water is your fresh water will evaporate, leaving more salt in the water. Your salinity will then go up. So you wanna make sure that throughout the day that's as, that's as level as you can possibly get it and an auto top off will solve that problem very quickly. And most auto top off systems are in the neighborhood of, I don't know, 80 to $150 depending. Uh, so you've got the tank, you've got the heater, you've got auto top off, you've got a return pump. Now you're gonna have to look into lighting. Lighting can get expensive too. Uh, or you can, you can always go used on this. Depending on what you're going to keep in your tank, that will dictate really you know, what kind of light you want to put over your tank. So if you're just keeping fish only, you really don't have to go too crazy with your lighting. Uh, you could just get a strip light, LED strip light, lots of cheap options there. If you're going to do anything with coral, I would suggest getting something small in the, especially if you've got a smaller tank, like a 25 to 50 gallon tank, maybe like an AI Prime HD, uh, Hydros from AI. There's a lot of great lighting out there. Kessel makes some really great products for smaller tanks too. A light for that size tank is going to be in the neighborhood of $200 to $400, I would say. Now you can get these used and this is, you can get all of this used. I wouldn't suggest getting a heater used, but I would definitely buy that new. Um, but I would suggest maybe getting um, 
maybe getting your lighting used, especially if it's your first tank. You're not going to go too crazy on that on that first build. Kind of want to use this as a learning tool, a learning thing. So you've got the lighting now. You've got the heater. You've got the ATO. I'm going through this all in my head. Uh, you've got the water. You've got the actual tank that you're going to use and a stand. That's pretty much it. There really isn't a whole lot that you're going to need right off the bat. I mean, we can get into dosing uh, and we can get into uh, filter media and reactors and things like that if you've got a sump. But a lot of times I think where people get hung up is they try to do too much too soon. And we have this saying in the reefing hobby, nothing good ever comes quickly or nothing good ever comes from a quick change. So if you start messing with things, you get your hands in the tank, you're doing it. I'm sure this probably applies to the freshwater world as well. But uh, just be patient with it. I think that's, that's part of this hobby that we end up missing is the journey. Because even me, who has been in the hobby for years and years and years, still has problems. If you go to my, if you go to my YouTube channel, my latest video is bubble algae outbreak all over one of my tanks. So just because I'm on YouTube, just because I'm talking to you now, just we all have those issues that happen in tanks. So I would say don't let any of that frustrate you. I feel like if you get past the year point, the year marker, when it comes to tanks, you're, uh, you're doing pretty good at that point. If you haven't given up within a year, you're doing pretty good. So uh, yeah, if, once you get into bigger tanks, I mean, the world is your oyster. I mean, there's some really great 300 plus gallon tanks on the market that you can purchase, and you're gonna get some really stable parameters with those. But again, everything is gonna cost exponentially more. If you wanna do a water change, you're talking about you know 30 to 50 gallons at a time. That's more salt, that's uh, more uh, elements when it comes to dosing. There's a whole bunch of different things that you got to think about in this hobby, but you can really, I think you could probably get away with, with a tank for less than two or $300, honestly. I've done it. I have a couple macro algae tanks at my house, uh, nine and a half gallon and a two and a half gallon. I've got a pom-pom crab in one of them and he's the coolest thing in the world. Uh, if you don't know what a pom-pom crab is, it's this uh, crab that has a symbiotic relationship with two anemones that they have in their pinchers and their claws so they can, uh, I guess, ward off predators and also feed the anemones at the same time, which is it's just a really cool thing. So once you get into it, honestly, there's so many different ways you can go. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm excited that new people are coming into the hobby. I'm excited that you're watching this video right now um, and learning how to, to set up that saltwater tank. I really don't have much more. I, honestly, it's, it's pretty simple. And there are hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube on how to set up a tank. Um, if you check out Inappropriate Reefer, he's got some great uh, he's got some great videos on how to set up a simple $150 tank. There are plenty of options out there. So, uh, is there any questions or anything? Yeah, going back to the idea of a year and the patience. Yes. How important is that? I think you'll find out pretty quickly if you've if you've got a passion for this or not. And I think most of us that make it past that year mark, uh, the curiosity is strong with us. Everybody in this room is curious about one thing or another. There's axolotls over there. I'm super curious about those, those the tortoises, and you've got coral, and there's new coral that I see every single time. So I think that there's, there's many different things that will reinvigorate you down the road. Uh, I would not let the algae and the uglies, as we call them, get you down. It happens to everybody. It's going to happen to you. And if you think you've escaped it, it's coming. It's going to happen. It's, it's just part of the adversity that you got to fight through in any hobby. You're going to have that with any hobby you do. So this, that's just ours here in the, in the reefing hobby. So Excellent, excellent. And going back to your water parameters, you want to dive a little bit deeper into that? Oh, yeah, sure. So I, I guess I did kind of leave out the whole mixing of, of salt and water. So I use Fritz Blue Box. Fritz is a huge sponsor here at Aquashella. Uh, I use it because it mixes well. It's, uh, it, it always gives me that eight alkalinity that I really strive to have in my reef tanks. But you're looking for, so you can, you can vary. 1.021 to 2.3 is good for fish only systems. 
I usually keep my reef tanks at about 1.026 or 35 parts per thousand, I believe. So that's that's where you're going to want to mix it to. And most most of the salts that you encounter when you go out to purchase them will have the mixing instructions on there. I usually put a power head in the actual mixing bucket, turn that on, throw a heater in there, put my salt in there. What you're going to have immediately is you're going to have salt resting on the bottom. I have a, a repurposed algae scraper that I use to kind of stir the witch's brew, if you will. And honestly, after one or two of those, it's 15 to 20 minutes later, you're fully mixed. I let mine sit for about two or three hours before I actually use it and let it heat up so that your temperatures are the same. But that's the water that you're going to use for your water change water. And I would suggest doing that probably once once or twice two to th- every two to three weeks. So if you get on like a one and a half week schedule or bi-weekly or whatever that is, just some sort of schedule when it comes to water changes, especially when the tank is smaller, you're probably not going to be dosing a whole lot and the corals will then get their nutrients from that water change. They'll, all of the alkalinity, the magnesium, the calcium, that will all be replenished or most of it will be replenished in water changes initially. Once you get too many corals in there, once you get a lot of stuff in there that's consuming all of that, then that's when you start talking about dosing uh, those elements in between water changes. So, uh, but yeah, 1.026 is, is where I keep reef tanks and like 1.021 to 23 if you're just doing a fish only system, so. Yeah, and that's another kind of big deal. Do you want to stay all the way to the corals or are you really passionate about keeping both together? Um, I, you know, it's a funny world in, in, the marine, in the marine world because there are reef-safe fish and there are not reef-safe fish. And there are cool fish on both sides of those, but like your puffers and things like that that really have a great personality are not necessarily reef-safe, so they might snack on the coral. So if you're really going to have a heavy coral tank, I would suggest... You know, getting those reef safe fish, those fish that are actually going to do a job, whether that be uh, eating algae like um, a lawnmower blenny or any kind of uh, bristle tooth tang. Those are always great for just kind of nipping at the algae along the way. Uh, A lot of the fish that I have in my tanks that are heavy in coral have a job, whether that be eating flatworms or pests uh, in the in the RAS department. or, I don't know, everybody's got clownfish. My clownfish are spawning every two weeks, so that's always fun. But most of the most of the fish that you'll have in a coral system are going to have a job. So if you want to do a fish-only system, that's when you can get in some of the crazy stuff, the, the really amazing angelfish. The emperor angel is one of my favorite uh, fishes of all time. And I love how they go from a juvenile you know, pattern to the striped emperor angelfish that you know and love. I had one at one point, and he was right in the middle of that change, and I we moved, and I had to get rid of him, but uh, that was a fish-only system. So whichever way you choose to go, um, that uh, I, th- I feel like the fish-only system is a, probably a little bit easier to care for down the road. You're not going to have as much flux. Uh, you won't have just random corals dying on you, uh, which happens from time to time. But, uh, yeah, just do you love fish more? Do you love coral? Do you love both? I know a lot of guys who don't have any fish in the coral system at all. They just have inverts or whatever, the cleanup crew. So uh, it's up to you, really. Where, where do your passions lie, I guess? Well, that's a good point, and that is a crossover to the freshwater world because you can't keep everything together. You have to have a safe, happy community. Yeah. So that is a very good point. Yeah, yep. Oh, here we go. You want to go in on working on a tang gang. <laughs> tang gang. Uh, well, you know, I think when I first got into the hobby, everybody was like, well, you can only keep one one tang shape. So like a, a sailfin tang and a yellow tang can't go together because they kind of have the same shape and silhouette and they will fight each other. Uh, or you can keep a blue tang with a yellow tang because they have a different shape. But I've seen so many great tanks, and I know that Unfortunately, tangs are very expensive right now as Hawaii has kind of shut down that export. But I think a yellow tang is like 150 bucks or something right now when they used to be like 40 or $50. But one of the coolest things in the hobby is getting a whole group of those yellow tangs together. They just kind of school around your tank. You have to have a larger tank for tangs. 
Um, I wouldn't suggest anything less than five or six feet. They really, like the longer the tank is, the better, because they're swimmers, that's what they do. Um, and they really need a larger tank. There's, uh, uh, and <laughs> there's a phenomenon in the reefing world called the Tang Police. And if you <laughs> happen to post a, even a baby Tang in a small tank, you will get called out for it. <laughs> but yeah, you can do it. If you, intro them, if you introduce them all at the same time, there's, there's a good likelihood that they will school around the tank and just at whatever shape you choose, uh, they'll do well together. So. Well, that's another common thing. The footprint of the tank is very important, in my opinion, in freshwater and saltwater. Yeah. So that, that's another thing that we have in common coming from the freshwater side yeah. myself. Yeah, freshwater, I don't know why. It, it, I used to keep it, and it intimidates me now. And I feel like saltwater may be a little bit more complex with, like, the mixing of the salt, and there's extra steps in there. But Well, and I believe that's what scares the freshwater people away. Right there. <laughs> yeah. you, you just nailed it. We're the it, same. Hit it on the head. We think it's too complex, and you're telling me that freshwater is too complex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there any other questions in there? Oh, let's see. Here. If not, I mean, we can we can totally wrap up. Uh, I I, it's, it's really not too difficult to to set up a saltwater tank. You know, I, I I think the the hardest part maybe just the mixing of the salt for the first couple times. You know. I guess the last question I actually have it would be, lighting for your corals, how important? It's uh well, you're gonna need you're gonna need something that supplies. Uh, enough light to uh, garner photosynthesis because you know you've got a lot of corals that rely on the sun in order to grow the zooxanthellae that's inside of them so that's another symbiotic relationship there are non-photosynthetic corals which are another that's another category of corals that are really cool you you actually like will feed them mice shrimp and things like that and they have a reaction to it it's really really an awesome experience but most corals are going to get their a lot of their energy from the sun so you want to mimic that as much as possible those are lights they're not cheap you know a lot of our lighting in the in the reefing world especially if you're going to go with something new large is going to run in the six to eight hundred dollar range for just a light one light fixture so it can get pretty pretty expensive but like i said if you if you go down on the uh like aqua illumination uh, Prime HDs are a great light to start. I still have them all over my tanks. They're super easy to manipulate. You can change the color temperature, all of that stuff. It's uh, You can get into one of those lights used for maybe a hundred bucks. So, and honestly, there's a lot of options on Amazon that you can, if you really wanna, if you really wanna uh, get down to the nitty gritty and pay 50 or 60 bucks for a light. Now, you don't get as many options with that. And if something goes wrong, there's probably not gonna be a warranty on it, so. Uh, things to think about, you know, when you get into it, especially when it comes to lighting and heating, you want to make sure that those are quality because if they're not and they break down, they can really be catastrophic. Um, and, and by way of fire, the heater malfunctions, nukes the tank, things like that. So, well, and we have that as well in the freshwater hobby. If if a heater goes, that that's one thing that you you keep up on no matter yep. no matter what. There, there's certain things you can skimp on and certain things you should not. Yes, that is for sure. That is for sure. Well, thank you so much, yeah. Remy. Any final thoughts about the show? You know, if, you, if you're if you in the Dallas area, if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, it's going on all day today. you got a whole day tomorrow to explore, too. Um, you know, if you haven't ever gotten out to one of these conventions before, if you're new in the hobby, which I would imagine a lot of people watching now are not new in the hobby, but if you find this video down the road, a convention is a really good way to see if this is something that you'd be interested in. You can see top of the line corals that are going for four or $5,000 in here, all the way down to the $5 corals. You can see if this is something you can afford, something you want to do. Maybe you come to an Aquashella where they've got reptiles and things like that. You go down that route. It's all, it's all options. I think that, it's, that these are so much fun to go to. Everybody here knows what they're talking about. And uh, yeah, if, you, if you're in the Dallas area and you want to come out tomorrow, make sure to come on out. I know that Aquashella is coming back to Chicago in October. That's another option. They're all over the country. So maybe it's a local frag swap or it's Aquashella. Make sure to stop out because this can really spark some creativity. So that's all I got.
All right, thank you so much, Remy. That was awesome. Yes, come check us out, Aquashella, Dallas. If you're anywhere close, you need to come by. There's just so much going on. Everything he said from reptiles, freshwater, saltwater, you name it. You want to see snakes, frogs, turtles. Yep. It's all here. Yep. It is a wonderful. And we will catch you all in the next stream.